Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Magic A Plays Better Than Wolves. Today you'll see we are in a creative world playing creatively. Um, and the reason for this is because on the forums, a good friend and a new member, Mr. Fister, is wondering about water mechanics in Better Than Wolves, and Minecraft as a whole. So I'd figure I'd try and make a, a video that explains the basics, a few of the tips, a few of the tricks, and some of the quirks. Uh, with water and how it works. So first off, let's start really basic here. Um, Minecraft works with water by having a single source block and if allowed to flow, it creates a flowing block directly beside the source block and beside that flowing block it will try to create more flowing blocks based on the height. So here we can have the highest flowing block because it's directly beside a source block. And from there on, the height of the water goes down and down and down and down until it's just this tiny sliver of water here. Water will also push any entities in the direction that it's flowing. I'm not holding any buttons, that's just the water pushing me. So if the water wants to flow that way, it'll push you that way. If the water is flowing down, it'll push you down. If for whatever reason you flip gravity upside down and water is flowing upwards, I'm sure it would push you upwards as well. Moving on. In Better Than Wolves, if you manage to get yourself a bucket and you went up to some water and you tried to collect it, I got a water bucket and I place said water bucket, it doesn't stick around. This is because Better Than Wolves doesn't actually create a source block where you place the or where you right click with the water bucket. Instead, it doesn't even create the highest flowing block. In fact, it creates the second highest flowing block on the block that you placed the water with the water bucket. So we're in creative. How do we get all these waters? Simple. Since it exists as a block in the game, we can use the give command. It's block ID of 8, and I only want 1. This gives me the water block. Now, it doesn't have a pretty uh, item icon, because you're not actually supposed to get water in this form. This is definitely cheating, because we use commands. So, water flows from the source block, creates a highest flowing the highest flowing water block and then there on and there through all the way around. This works in two dimensions as well. I missed my point, but the point, uh, it can sort of be seen. We'll place it on the blue block just for aesthetic sake. So directly adjacent to each source block, here, 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 and here, we have the highest flowing blocks each block adjacent to those highest flowing blocks we have the second highest flowing blocks so on and so forth all the way until these tiny slivers whoops, down at the end that's how water flows when it's on a flat uh, I've got some notes that I'm reading off here because I already made this video twice. Shh, don't tell the audience. Um, so yeah, that's how we create water source blocks in vanilla. Er, yeah, basically. In creative, I should say, not vanilla. In creative, we can just give them to ourselves. Also, a nice thing, rather than typing out the command each time, you can place an item frame on the wall. Right click, it takes the block, and if we clear our inventory, there's no water sources, and I middle mouse click, that's the select block in creative, if I middle mouse click on the uh, item frame with the water in it, it gives me the water. So that's really nice, you can set up yourself a wall of super cheaty items. Now, in survival mode, how would we manage to create water? Um, water in Minecraft flows and its flowing water blocks are dependent on the nearest source block, basically. The nearer the source block, the higher the water flowing. 
So if we have two source blocks a little ways from each other, we get some pretty funny looking stuff. It doesn't look like it's flowing because it's being evenly pushed with flowing blocks from either side. That's basically how the textures for the tops of the blocks are being decided. So this didn't actually create any sources though. Oops. We can tell because the water doesn't stick around when we destroy the original sources. We can tell it's a source block simply by separating or putting it by itself and we can see that it doesn't disappear. So in order to create a source block say in the middle here, right where the sandstone is, we have to create a situation where there's a highest flowing block with a source block on either side of it. So there's a highest flowing water block here, there's a source here, place a source here, there's now a source that's been created here. We can test this by isolating it and seeing that it in fact does not just disappear. While normally I suppose I can't do it really. Um, if we wanted a source here, we could place a source here, and it creates it all the way through. This works in every single direction. It doesn't have to be directly opposite. Again, in every single direction, we can see the corner is being filled in, and it can be fun. You can create two sources at once simply by doing this. And there we go. Now, now that we've got created sources, how do we actually make use to this? Well, there's actually just one little caveat to this so far. We've been creating sources on top of solid blocks. Correct? These are solid blocks. We've been creating sources on them. If we, for instance, try to put a source block here, it pushes out, creates a highest flowing block beside it. We should be able to place a source here. We'd have a source, the highest flowing block, and another source. Therefore, by the term logic so far, this should turn into a source. And it sure looks like that. We don't see the flowing water animation on top. It looks to be flat and we see no difference. So let's test it. We're going to isolate it. It disappears. That's because we tried to create a source block on top of air. In order to create a source block, it has to be on top of an, any block other than that of air or flowing water. What do you mean flowing water? Well, where's that corner? Did I dig it out? Here we go. We can test this. Er, no, I didn't want to do that. Just like this. All right, so currently there's a source block right here, flowing water everywhere else. Source block, source block, the central block, since it's reside or sitting on top of flowing water, it's not an actual source block, but rather the highest flowing block. In order to create a source block in the middle there, It has to be sitting on top of another source block. Basically anything but flowing water. And, you know, torches and stuff. Well, maybe. Will it be given the opportunity? No, I don't think I could actually place water that fast. If we have a torch here, we'd have to attempt to place water here and here fast enough. Or we could actually cheat it. by having water here and here. Now there's a torch underneath this block. No, didn't work. Torch broke too quickly. Anyways, that's a little bit about how to create source blocks in Minecraft. You may have seen also, water does not flow on top of other flowing water blocks. Source blocks, however, uh, Break that. Not even. Wait, what? 
it has to be the flat top texture. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. Water does not flow out on top of other water. All right, good to know. Today I learned. This is why we do science, folks. So, oh, one thing I forgot to point out is if you place a, a source block, I'm sure you've already seen it, if you place a source block, it forces the highest flowing water blocks out beside it. But highest flowing water blocks can only create more water blocks, more flowing water blocks beside it if there is a solid block beneath it. Also, that's another funny quark right there. Why is it not flowing over the side? This has to do with how Minecraft handles game updates. And at the time of uh, placing this block, if we can go back to our original state, wait for the water to disappear. There we go. If we go back to our original state, and there, and if I place one right here, now it did. Why is this? It's because water takes the path of least resistance. It tries to get down as fast as it can. So, if there's an obstruction that comes into the way, it takes the one path where it can go out and then straight down again. If the water had instead had to go this way, it would have had to go travel one full block horizontally, another full block horizontally, before it would have been able to go down. Rather, on this side, it only had to go out one block horizontally before being able to fall down. Keep that in mind if you want to create some weird water effects. It's fun stuff. Okay, so now what do we know? We know that in order to create a source block, we have to do it on top of either solid water, source blocks, or any other solid block. So in, well, any game mode really, how can we tell if it's flowing water or a source block? I've got this little tank here to help us test this out. Along the top here, I've placed source blocks. You can see it's not refilling itself, so we know for fact that down below there is no source blocks. But if we don't want to destroy our water, how can we tell? A simple test would be to have a, at least a 3x3 three three area where you could swim or er, dive down to the bottom and then just holding space, look at how slowly you go upwards. So when swimming in water, there's basically three different speeds. There's a speed at which you get pulled downwards in regular flowing downwards water with no blocks beside you. And then also there's an additional friction if on at least one side there is a solid block and you try swimming upwards. So I'm just going to hold space. And we move upwards at an agonized, agoni I can't do words, an extremely slow rate. We can fix this by having no blocks beside us other than more water and we move up much quicker. That's the same speed as in the very center here. And if we want to move up even quicker than that, all we have to do is, or more so to test if they're all source blocks, Diving back to the bottom in the center of this 3x3 three three area, we swim upwards much faster. Well, not much faster, but a little bit faster. And that's basically how you can tell if there's flowing water or if there's source water in a small area. So, that looks to be the rest of my notes. Now we're going to move on to how is this useful? And how can I use it to fix my farm? So here we've got our very nice 
farming water. Over here, the expansive ocean. Lots of source water blocks in there that we can abuse and use for our uh, re-aquifying needs. So I'm just going to grab this uh, water source back. So in the bottom here, I have flowing water, and then around the top, I have source blocks. Easily shown because the top source blocks are not remaking themselves. So, this is survival. I don't have access to this block or this item in my hand. I don't have access to that. So, how do I fix my water, my farm's water, down at this lower level um, so that I can have a nice swimming pool that I can go fishing in sometimes? Although, I think this is actually too small to go fishing in. What we have to do is we have to go out to our expansive ocean or other large body of water and find basically the furthest out points of water at the point at the depth that we'd like our farm water to be fixed at. So we can see that's this corner here. If we move all the way in this direction to the far corner, we can see that we have another one over here. Conveniently, our farm water is located I put a block here, it would kind of create this little wall to see where the water is. We can see that our farm is conveniently located within the bounding box for this ocean. That's all we need to know in order to save our water. And how we go about doing this is by simply breaking out the corner blocks. We saw right there that the water flowed in from either side, created a highest point flowing block with a source on either side, therefore creating a source. This also happens underwater. There's now a source block there. It's hard to see, but it does happen. So in order to get our farm, we just have to bust out basically the corner blocks. Yeah, so we can actually see the bottom here, source, source, highest flowing, turns into a source. Top block, source, source, highest flowing, so it turns into a source. Also because below, there is a source block, not a flowing water block. If we tried that here, it doesn't work. Why? Because there, on the bottom side, there's only a source here. This is in the very bottom corner here still a flowing water block so the block above it cannot be created into an actual source. Break this block out, the sources move in, on the top it sees that it can now move in again using update magic uh, and then it finishes flowing in. So we just basically cut out the corners of our farm all the way out to our expansive and wonderful ocean and now our farm is fully saturated, all the way down to the bottom. We can go back, fill in the land between our expansive ocean and our wonderful farming area to however prettily, how, however prettily you want it to be. And we now have full source blocks along the entire bottom of our farming water and along the top. Uh, I think that's all that I could get to today. Oh, right. One last thing. So this entire video, I've been saying that in order to create a source block, you have to have a source, highest flowing, and a source. This only works along the X and Z axes of Minecraft. So Minecraft runs along three axes. If it was a large cardinal plane, we'd have the Z axis, the X axis, and the Y axis. Water duplication only works along the Z and Y axis, X axis. It does not work along the Y axis. We can easily show this in our little test chamber here by placing a source block here. We have a highest flowing water block here, placing another source here. In theory, since we have a source, a source, and a highest flowing water block, this should turn into a source block. But it did not stay, so there was no source. I think that's everything there is to cover about water. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, 
yeah, so have a good day, evening, night, or whatever it may be due to your geographical location. And, uh, ciao.